Holy buckets. What the heck? Whoa. Oh, like a truck. A truck like dropped a bunch of rocks in the road. Today is day 34 of my Grand American Adventure. I'm speaking to you from South Florida and I'm headed to Everglades National Park. So yeah, I left the keys. I didn't really vlog it. Ooh, I was so tired of the sun. It was it's it is so hot down here, you guys. I mean, I I am a real champ when it comes to extreme temperatures, hot and cold. I really do believe that. But I I hit my limit. I was I was tired of of being hot. Yeah, so I went snorkeling yesterday. It went okay. <laughs> I didn't see a lot. And then I started swimming out to this island that was like, I don't know, a hundred yards out. But the current was so strong that just imagine swimming and you're like going and going and going and not making any progress. And I made it three quarters of the way to the island before I turned around. And on the way back, I was still, the current wasn't, it was like a, uh, I need to go back to geometry. Uh, it was like a perpendicular current, like it was going across me, so it was pushing me like, basically both directions were so difficult, there was a point that I just thought I'd need a boat to come get me. I... I'm so tired. I don't like it anymore. I don't want to swim anymore. I'm a land mammal. I'm a land mammal. I don't want to. And... <laughs> I was swimming out there and I'm like, oh, there's people out there, like, this is fine. And I get three quarters of the way out and the buoys were not people, they were buoys. And all of a sudden I realized I was totally alone. It was so scary, oh my God. I was just really exhausted by the end of that. I was like, get me out of here, I'm done. So I ended up grabbing lunch on, I think Marathon, one of the islands. And then I drove to Miami. I stayed in the suburbs because I'm just like, I can't spend any more money right now. I need to just like chill out on the money. So I forfeit Miami. I'm sorry, Miami. I went to the gym, took a shower, which was amazing. Then went to Starbucks, worked on some videos, and I got a really good night's sleep in a Walmart parking lot. And I got new curtains. My, I like broke my curtain rod the other night, and then I fixed it. Well, now I got a brand new curtain rod, so my sleeping situation has improved again. It's so weird how quickly it fluctuates between being a good and being a bad situation. Anywho, that's just recapping yesterday, not to leave you guys in the dark. I have decided to drive back to the Everglades. I'm just gonna show up. I'm gonna just scope it out and see what happens. And then the goal after that is to just get the darn tootin' heck out of Florida. Cause I've been here for way too long. I'm sorry. There are other things that I want to see, and I got, I've been in Florida for like almost two weeks, I think. I have no idea, to be honest. Do, 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 seen that sign before. I am now in Everglades National Park. I have actually already been here for about an hour. I ran out of memory on my phone, so I've been just clearing off my phone. I stopped at the Ernest F. Coe Visitors Center. It is the first 
stop in the park. Uh, you can get in there for free. You don't have to pay admission. Really good place to learn about the Everglades. And I talked to a ranger and got a map and all of the uh, tips and tricks. She reassured me that I will be just fine hiking by myself and that the animals will not get me. So I actually just stopped at one of the first stops along the trip and there's a ranger talk going on so I'm gonna sit and listen to that for a little while and then I'm gonna go explore on my own and I am so glad I'm here. I have learned so much already. I am I find this sort of thing very interesting and I can't wait to learn all the fun facts and then share it with you guys. So Ooh, he's getting kind of close to me. Deal. Aw, cute. I think you guys are friends. Oh, no. He's backing up. Oh, geez. Oh, they don't like each other. Oh, man. Oh, that's crazy. I am so close to you right now. There is an estimated 200,000 alligators in the Everglades alone. So population is not really an issue for them. The average size of a gator around here is between five and 10 feet in length. However, the largest alligator in the Everglades measured at 12 feet long, and the largest alligator in history measured 18 feet, but that was back in 1890. So apparently they don't grow that big anymore. <laughs> I'm just, fascinated at how many there are. It's kind of crazy how many I've seen and how unbothered they are by, hu oh my God, that is a huge, hold on, pause. The best part I have found about these gators is 
I just love watching their tails. 80% of an alligator is made up of muscle and armored skin. So that's why they, well, they're kind of slow. You can just tell like watching them move. And I love watching their tails go in the water and how they just swim away and they're so active here and i'm coming midday and they're still really active apparently in the mornings they tend to mate and they hunt at night so i'm coming midday and they are just going to town it is super duper awesome there are american crocodiles here as well but i do not expect to see them because there aren't as many but i would love to see a crocodile someday Everything here is dependent on water. That is the whole point of the Everglades. And that is what makes... Well, hey there. See, I just, I can't even go two seconds without seeing an alligator. You're like a teenager alligator. <laughs> they think that their long arms are so dorky. <laughs> what was I talking about? Oh yeah, water. In the 1800s and early 1900s, a bunch of settlers came and done messed up the ecosystem. They came in and found these swamps and said, oh, this is worthless to us. So they built a bunch of dams and canals and they brought in their own gecko thing. They came in, brought new species, new plants, potentially destroyed an entire ecosystem. Now, the Everglades are actually the largest remaining subtropical environment in North America. But little did they know at the time how important that was. All of these things end up dumping 1.7 billion gallons of fresh water into the ocean every single year. Why is that important? The park is 18,000 square miles today, and that's only half of what it used to be. And there's tons of natural wildlife that are headed out the door with it, including the American crocodile, the wood stork, the Florida panther, and the West Indian manatee, which sore subject for this one since I've been trying to see one for a long time now, and I just can't. And it's all because of Christopher Columbus. And that's why Ernest F. Coe started to work towards creating Everglades National Park in 1928, but it took him 20 years to do it. It wasn't until the 1940s until they actually made any progress and the park was established. And that's when they came up with the Comprehensive Everglades Restoration Plan. This plan defines a 36-year strategy to save the ecosystem, where 20% of the water is directed to the cities of Florida and 80% of that water is directed back into the natural environment. And that's why Everglades National Park is not only a national park, it's also an international biosphere reserve, a world heritage site, and considered a wetland of international importance. Sounds like a big deal to me. And I, for one, am bummed that I'm only gonna be here for today. And I'm only seeing a little bit of it, and... And I'm only... Crows, get out of here! And I'm only going to see a little bit of it. My point is, who knows how much longer it'll actually be here. I don't see anything, but I hear a whole lot. I think those are baby gators in there. I can't tell for sure, but they sure look like little babies. They're so cute. Yeah, those are gators. They gotta be. Does that mean that's mama talking out there? I don't know. Uh. 
So I think I am heading out of the park. It's been a really short trip. I think I've been here like four hours, which was longer than I expected, maybe, maybe even five hours. Yesterday I even considered just skipping it and I'm just kicking myself for even thinking something like that. I feel like the general consensus from my friends and family was to be afraid of this park. I mean, even recently, this kid just got eaten by an alligator in Orlando. Now, the ranger that spoke today debunked some myths about that, which I was really grateful for. Basically, people in the cities are more likely to feed the animals, and then therefore the gators are used to humans being a source of food. Now, when you're you're a really pretty looking bird, buddy. Shut up, crow. No one likes you. So they actually encourage people to go off of the paths. The park is open 24 seven. You can come and go as you please. You can backcountry camp. You shouldn't be afraid of being eaten. And that was what I was afraid of. So I'm really glad I came here. Yeah, my time here is coming to an end and I am heading out of Florida. Up, 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 up. I'm headed north. I'm gonna just drive until my eyeballs pop out of my face or my feet fall off or something. Man, like part of me wants to stay, but it's just, it's too hot. It's too hot here. I'm sunburnt. Living in a car down here is really hard. I don't know how other people do it, but I'm ready to head north. It's just kind of sad. Okay, I do, I get emotional. That was kind of perfect. <laughs> I have so many feel. Ow. Man, it's so hot down here. See, I feel so many feelings. Ugh. I go from feeling totally happy to totally sad. But then I'm happy, like all of a sudden. And then I remember, oh my God, it's so hot. I have to get out of here. Like, my mustache is sweating. What a, what a great day though. Oh my goodness. I just, I just, I get so emotional, baby, every time that I gotta travel on. Gators, nothing but gators and turtles, so many reptiles. And birds, there's so many.
give me a thumbs up and subscribe. And I'll see you guys later.